everybody, this is Natalia from Natalia Pipenev's NPN and today I'm going to show you how to put together a lovely Valentine's Day dinner that doesn't cost a lot and really doesn't take that much time. Hi y'all, today I'm going to show you how to put together a quick, simple and easy recipe for the partner in your life that has been through it all during quarantine. I know a lot of you are not going to go out. We would like for you to come here to Udinese and have your dinner here, but we know that that's probably not a possibility. So I'm going to show you how to put together a quick and easy meal that goes from appetizer to dinner really in like five minutes. So to start with, you're going to need about, I would say six cloves of garlic and you don't have to mince it. You just chop it up like this. I do like to give it a big slice. We're going to give put three zhuzhes around the pan of olive oil. What you don't want to do is burn your garlic because that flavor translates to the sauce and the whole premise of this dish is really the sauce. You're going to need a giant baguette or a half a dozen popsicles to sop up that sauce. So we're going to take those six cloves of garlic that are sliced. It's sizzling, which is what you want, but you don't want to brown. You're going to take, I'd say about a dozen little necks. You know, we live in New England. We're very fortunate to get amazing seafood. So we have little necks. If you don't like little necks, use mussels, fine. You're gonna throw these all in. You can see the garlic is not brown. Hear that sizzle? You want that sizzle. You're gonna throw in two tablespoons of chopped parsley or cilantro, whatever you like. I'm going to throw in a couple of dashes of hot sauce. At home, sometimes I like to use red pepper flakes. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. And this is totally up to you. You can use white wine or you can use beer. Personally, I like the white wine, so you're going to do about a cup. That's what you want, and that's pretty cool. So you're going to let that go. And we're going to wait until they open up. Let me grab my scoop, clean holes. You're gonna let that sit in there until all the little necks open. If within a few minutes those little necks don't open, you're gonna have to discard them. So once this is open, this is ready to go. It's an amazing appetizer with some bread. However, for those of you who want to make it a little bit more interesting, you want to make a dinner out of it, have a pot of pasta on the side. Cook the pasta to the directions on the package. I'm sure you all know how to do that. Once you drain it, you're going to add some butter to the pasta. And once these little necks are all open, if you don't want to make this an appetizer, you want to make this a meal, just dump the little necks over the pasta and you have an amazing Valentine's Day dinner. Dish, we're gonna make a really great shrimp dish. We call it Kamaran Walim, but I'm gonna make it slightly different because not everybody has the base for this shrimp. So we're gonna make it without the base today so that it's easier for you to make at home. And this is super easy to follow along and make here. We're going to need, I like to mix a little bit between the olive oil, so probably like two tablespoons of olive oil, and we're going to do about a tablespoon of butter you kind of want that to melt together and come up to not a not a high flame so keep it on medium high watch it for the garlic in this case the garlic is going to be minced and you do want it to be finely minced because you don't want those huge chunks of garlic in there while you're having your shrimp and these shrimp are called uh, 2630 so they're not that big and you don't want them to be the same size garlic to shrimp. So mix the garlic, and I have about six to eight cloves of garlic that we're going to use. So the first thing you do is you're going to put your garlic in with the butter. Instantly, it permeates the entire kitchen and it smells beautiful of garlic. You're going to add all your shrimp into the frying pan. Wow, that smells really amazing. So we're gonna add a couple pinches of salt. You 
can see that the garlic and the shrimp are coming together beautifully. Give it a second. And you see that the garlic is not burning, which is what we want. We don't want the garlic to burn. You just want the garlic to become translucent. And that flavor is going to translate to your sauce. Once you burn the garlic, you're kind of going to have to start all over again because it translates into a bitter taste in the sauce. We're not looking for that. We're looking for this to taste delightful. So stir this around. You see that there's plenty of garlic in here. Right at the end, when the butter and the olive oil start to sort of dry out a little, you're going to add your parsley. I do like really good fresh parsley in here. About two tablespoons of parsley. So this is totally up to you. Red pepper flakes or the um, hot sauce, whatever hot sauce you like. I do like a hot sauce that doesn't have a lot of vinegar in it because again, that's gonna make your dish slightly acidic. And we have lemon for that, and it's going to be really fantastic if you just use a couple, probably like a tablespoon of the hot sauce. So now you're gonna let that hang out for a couple of minutes. Make sure that all the shrimp are well coated in the garlic and the butter mixture. And they're going to turn slightly opaque. I'm going to turn the heat up slightly, and this is when you're going to add your wine. There's a finish to this. Right before you add your wine, you're going to add your slices of lemon. I literally just throw in the slices of lemon. This is actually two slices of lemon I just cut in half. Throw that in. We're going to throw in our wine. Probably about, I'd say, a cup. That smell is really amazing makes me want to grab a giant piece of bread and just throw it in there and clean up that pan. Right at the end, when this comes to a boil and you see that it's boiling all around, you're going to add the butter, but only when we turn off the stove so we don't break the butter up. We just want it to cook until it's beautifully translucent and all the shrimp are well cooked. Look at this sauce. This sauce is really amazing with all the garlic in it. What's gonna bring the sauce together and it, what's gonna create that thick texture of it is when you throw the butter in at the end when the stove is turned off. So all your shrimp is cooked now. You're gonna turn off the flame. You're gonna take it off the heat and instantly it stops coming to a boil. And you're going to add another tablespoon of butter and you're sort of going to like whiz it in there. You want to stir it around so that it creates that pool in the center, and you can see that the sauce starts to cream together, which is pretty amazing. So again, I'm going to say, you don't want to make this just an appetizer. Don't. When you're done with this, you throw this over pasta. For this one, I'd probably say a thinner pasta, like an angel hair pasta, because the shrimp is delicate. And again, you have this amazing meal. I really hope you make these recipes and think of your loved ones on Valentine's Day. You've got all the tools and it's fairly simple and there's not many ingredients that go in it. Do it for Valentine's Day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this you should have ready for Sunday because we are going to need a good cocktail. And so I have created two cocktails. One of them is for the person who likes things a little sweeter with a little chocolate in it. And the other one is gonna be something citrusy and fresh. So for the first cocktail, we're going to make a raspberry puree. And all it is is super simple. You don't even need special equipment. You take a package of strawberries or raspberries, whichever you prefer, and you just muddle it or put it in a food processor with sugar until it dissolves and it's well blended together. So here's how this process goes. To make it super cute, get some chocolate syrup, whatever chocolate syrup you have at home. And you're going to dip a champagne glass in the chocolate syrup. And this is pretty simple. Just keep gobbling it up in there. And then you're gonna flip it over. And eventually, the chocolate is gonna run down the glass like this one here, which is oh so cute. And you can lick the glass when you're done. 
So you're gonna put a couple of tablespoons of the raspberry puree or strawberry puree, whichever you prefer. I definitely wanna get, I'd say, the bottom of the glass should be, I'd say like a quarter, a third of the way up. Doesn't that look pretty? And there's nothing in it yet. You're going to add some champagne. Well, before we add the champagne, let's add the triple sec. So we're gonna do like a half, uh, about an ounce of triple sec. Then you're gonna to top it off with champagne, careful so it doesn't bubble over. And voila, your cocktail is ready. Tell me that doesn't look fantastic. Look at that lovely color and do not stir because that should sit at the bottom and you know it's champagne, you should not stir, but isn't that lovely? Enjoy. All right there, for the next cocktail, a little citrusy. We're going to do, and by the way, at home, I'll tend to mix this. Sometimes I do it with a combination of lemon and lime or my all-time favorite, grapefruit and limes together. But I'm gonna keep it simple today for those of you who don't want all that citrus in your drink. But it's got lots of vitamin C. So you're gonna do about, I'd say, four slices of lemon. Do it slightly thin so that you can get all the juice extracted from it. You're gonna do about a tablespoon of sugar. If you don't like it that sweet, then just use less. We need to muddle this. If you don't muddle this, you're not going to extract all that juice out of it. So all we have in there is lemon and sugar, but the trick is what happens when you muddle it together, it's going to create a really nice juice at the bottom of this cup, as it just did. And that was so simple. And already we have a lovely juice at the bottom of the cup. So to this, we're going to add St. Germain. I really love St. Germain. It's an elderberry flower liqueur. You can find it in any store. So we're going to use an ounce and a half of elderberry liqueur. And then we're going to use two ounces of your favorite vodka. And then we're going to add lots of ice. And then you're gonna shake it. And all that is gonna to come together. When you're done with all that, either you can strain it, depending on what glass you use. If you wanna use a martini glass, strain it out and make it so that it's just the liquor in it. If you're not gonna strain it out, which I'm feeling like I want to have like, a, you know, this glass here, this cognac glass, because I like the way it looks. You're going to pour it all into the glass with the lemon and all. Now, to finish this off, you need to add some sort of mineral water or else this is all alcohol and you're not gonna make it through Valentine's Day. So we have here, I'd say about a quarter of this bottle you're going to pour in and you can use whatever mineral water you like. Stir it up. Don't stir too much because it is a mineral water which makes it carbonated. And look at that lovely cocktail. You have to admit that looks really refreshing and delicious. And the flavor of the elderberry flower in this cocktail is absolutely delightful. For these recipes and more, check the link.